Oh, like a, Let's collaborate so that you can us. do this. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Let me not, let me not. Accountability wanna, died yeah, the day it's... the internet adopted the word collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> even as a director, like even if I have ideas, I want the DP to come with their own ideas. I want the editor to come with their ideas um, because I think all parts of that process is what creates the project and all of our decisions matter. Yeah, for sure. That's how you build inclusion. Inclusion mm. is equity building, representation and diversity. Yeah is often tokenization and equality, and those yeah. are different things. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to episode four. Uh, on this one, we have two guests. Our first guest is brand strategist and writer Joshima, who has been an, uh, a creative consultant and an experiential events planner for over five years. With a background in luxury automotives, brand partnerships, and music marketing, Joshima has curated over 300 events and activations across disciplines. Her love for storytelling is embodied in her pieces as a journalist and in helping clientele sell without selling out. Our second guest is Shoshana, who is a film and events producer who manages high-value, large-scale productions. She dedicates her time to develop narrative films and documentary projects that are reflective of the multilingual, multicultural world she grew up in. They are both the founders of Ode, which help brands, businesses, and artists scale through culturally competent storytelling, artist management, and strategy. On this episode, we speak on partnerships that align with your creative goals, addressing gaps by embedding inclusivity, and trusting your lived experiences. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you are not already. Um, if you feel like you are, you should go check anyway. Sometimes, you know, things happen. YouTube is a fun place. Um, if you're on Spotify, go ahead and uh, share this episode with as many people as you can. And um, yeah, I appreciate you listening and uh, watching and enjoy the episode. Welcome. Hi. 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 How's it going? I really feel we're like in like a YouTube studio right now. That's interesting. I don't know if that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I just want to make sure that's a good feeling. Like that's a comfortable feeling. That's like a yeah. professional, but also like, you know, close feeling, right? Yeah. You know, we're, we're willing to be open and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like, are we circle. about mm -hmm. to take a lie detector test? Is that what's about to happen? <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> That'd be... <laughs> you ready? It's dramatic sound. <laughs> exactly. Um, cool. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you both for being here. Thank you uh, for yeah, I really do appreciate it. It's an honor to be sitting across from both of you. Um, I've heard a lot about you in the span of a few months uh, when we met you both. And um, I feel like it's been, uh, you know, a, a, something that's was bound to happen eventually. Christine couldn't stop mentioning you guys in terms of the guests <laughs> that we wanted on the podcast. So I'm glad it's finally happening. Um, I guess first question, how are you both feeling? I thought this was going to be a real first question. I was like, whoa! Oh, like, how okay. you actually feeling? Yeah. <laughs> um, I am okay. I just mm. got to New York yesterday. Nice. Are you jet lagged at all? Is that, that, does that exist? With no. <laughs> I definitely used to feel the jet lag more mm. when I first started traveling between New York and LA. But I think now my body is just used to it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think jet lag's a myth. I think it's like something you say... I don't think when you're that's like trying true, to but when you're trying to like say, show people that you've traveled, you're like, yeah, I'm just jet lagged, <laughs> and they're like, oh, so you travel? Ooh. That's really funny because <laughs> when I traveled a lot last year, and I mean, a lot, I was like, jet lag's not real; it's a myth. I didn't <laughs> really that. And now that I'm not chronically, painfully, unhealthily exhausted, I'm like, oh, it's actually mm. okay. I'm not so mm. jet lagged anymore. Yeah, so, so, it, so I'm it's, well, not jet yeah, lagged. So it's real. I guess it is real. Yeah, we won't dwell on this. We won't well, debate truths. I'm gonna Your do a truth, survey. Yeah, truth. I'm gonna do a survey one day, and then I'll get back to you guys on that. Okay. Okay. How are you feeling? I feel good. It's always really nice to see Shushana. Mm -hmm. It would be great if we saw each other without an immediate thing to go do. We're notorious for being like, just got to the airport. See you at the event, production, concert, show, <laughs> strategy <laughs> meeting, podcast recording in 30 minutes. Nice. Um, but it's cool that we get to do what we love and mm -hmm. talk to people we like. So I'm good. Only like though. We only like you. That's fair. Yeah. I I will like. I would like to earn at least some kind of affection. You know. So that's we can start somewhere. Ask and you shall receive. Nice. That's good. That's good. I promise I won't do anything crazy or backstab you. Oh shit. Yeah. It, uh, Jeez. Uh, yeah, hey. I was thinking a hug. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. <laughs> He's Not like, don't all. worry, betrayal. We're good. How did you? How did you both? Uh, how did you meet each other? Oh fuck. Yeah, let's go back. All right, I know you usually tell the story. I'll tell it this time. Um, mm. No, you can tell it. 
<laughs> Never mind. Your turn. <laughs> I looked at her because I ask her to tell it every time and she says no. <laughs> um, how did Shoshana and I meet? A mutual friend of ours runs a digital media platform and mm. they had a friend who was producing a web series. Doc, web series. Mm. I was like, I don't remember what that project was supposed to be <laughs> because it never came out. As um, things do, yeah. Yeah, and the entire cast was male identifying people who showed up mm -hmm. an hour late and Shushan and I were on time and we met mm -hmm. each other in a coffee shop and she was the DOP and I was the AD that day and we realized we had a lot in common, specifically the sarcastic, <laughs> dry sense of humor and brutal life honesty built yeah. into small talk. And we stayed friends. Beautiful. Yeah. Conversation was very, very easy to have. Nice. And that is uh, something that I also felt when I first met both of you. Um, we haven't had like an extended conversation, me and you yet. But no, this is our first is real first conversation one, yeah. on camera. I find out that I find that that happens a lot with the podcast. I gotta <laughs> figure that out because sometimes you can tell it's the first time. You know what I'm saying? I've had I've actually had one artist who, <laughs> someone we actually know mutually, and I had no hard feelings. I love him to death, um, but he was like, "Yeah, when I watched it, I, it felt like we had Aww. met for the first time, and that was our first conversation." And I was like. It's not, it doesn't feel bad though. That's like a nice yeah. thing. I didn't want it to come out. I was like, yeah, that's fair. It's, you know, it's your image at the end of the day. So we're going to. It's like a date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. There's yeah, ones yeah. where you're like, Ugh. and there's other ones where you're like, oh. Oh, wait. So this never released. Three. It never, it never got released. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. And I might know who it is. Yeah. You might know who it is. <laughs> it's going to happen eventually. We got to, we got to get it back. I feel very left but, out of the No, it's okay. Way. We'll listen. We'll talk it's about it. okay. Offline. Um. Nice, that's very sweet. When did uh, Ode come into the picture? Into uh, the fold? Yeah, well, so after that first meeting, mm -hmm. Joshua and I started doing like personal projects together mm -hmm. and then some, you know, professional projects together and we just jived really well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we have sort of the same philosophies, um, which is obviously really important before going of into course. business together. Yes. Um, and then uh, in 2020, uh, literally right before the shutdown. Four days. <laughs> wow. um, we met with a restaurant client to sign as our first client. And um, then uh, the world shut down. Oh, that was right before. Oh. <laughs> but we still had a business. We still had a client that yeah. we had to answer to. Um, oh, and so that fun. was that was actually, I think, honestly, like when I think about it, I'm just like, we kind of... We signed a restaurant client, helped them survive a pandemic, and mm. they're actually thriving now. Yeah, they're crushing it. And they stayed, we, they, we stayed working with them for nearly yeah. two years, so that was really cool. Yeah, no, I think there was a very specific moment. Shushana and I worked on a micro short film <laughs> before it happened. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, is it 18 seconds? Yeah. No, like actually micro short films. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. a, a friend of mine worked at Giphy, still does, and Giphy obviously was running an animated short film uh, contest, okay. and she just asked us to enter because she wanted to be able to present her team with a diverse array yeah. of entries and people that maybe traditionally wouldn't be exposed to something like that. Mm -hmm. And so we entered, and the two of us being the two of us, we're like, we're not about to do some happy-go-lucky Lego animation, because that <laughs> seems... Not it. Yeah. Not that those aren't great. Mm -hmm. But we were like, what if we do something brooding? Mm. Because nice. it seems to be our brand, brooding and traumatic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Well informed and mm -hmm. historic. So That's Shushana great. came over and I lived in the east side of Manhattan at the time and we had 20 minutes until I needed to leave and mm -hmm. go to this festival in West Virginia wow. with a Punjabi artist. And I was like, okay, I have this idea. And I was very conscious that I did not go to film school. Mm -hmm. I did not work in a film job. And so my vernacular and ability to describe something was really limited. Mm. And Shushana had done a lot of those things in different capacities, whether professionally or during her time at school or in theater. And so so I was like, I'm going to put all this eyeliner on my eye and you're going to zoom in and I'm going to force myself to cry. And then you're going <laughs> to put the flags of India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan in my iris. Okay? And she was like... Yeah, okay. And I was like, okay. And this would be the first of many times Shushana has entertained my ideas with minimal reaction. Therefore, I'm left to wonder if that reaction is real, <laughs> if it's absurd. <laughs> and so we then put this, it's like a 
It's like Bengay. If you okay. know what that is, like a menthol muscle yeah, yeah, yeah. relaxer yeah. type yeah. situation like spread. Like icy hot stuff. Yeah. Tiger Balm is the South Asian, East Asian version of that. And okay. that shit is hot. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. And, you know, because I didn't go to film school or ever Google anything about film, didn't know you could buy fake tears. And at the time I was cold oh and dark God. and had no soul. And yeah. so I put Tiger Balm under my eye. Right, like right here. And I was like, this will make me cry for sure. (laughs) For sure. It'll also burn your skin. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. But I did that and then went off to my event with a face that looked like I got sucker punched. And then Shushana, (laughs) like 10 days later, sends me this edit. And Mm -hmm. the color grading was stunning. Mm, Nice. And it was exactly what I imagined in my head. And I think that was the moment that I was like, if I want to do anything in this life that feels real and authentic and tangible... It has to be with somebody that creatively speaks the same language as me, despite us having extremely different experiences and knowledge. And so fast forward two years from that day, I had had this conversation with this friend that runs these restaurants. And I was like, the only person I know whose strengths are my weaknesses and vice versa and who will understand something without needing much explanation Mm -hmm. is Shushana. So that's kind of how it started. That's beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm really distracted by how beautiful Joshima looks right now. <laughs> and now I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful story. Um, and I think people might, like, especially people who aren't necessarily um, creative, um, I think sometimes underestimate the feeling when you have an idea and yeah. you see it in real life. When that bridge happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and ex- especially, which is very rare, especially when it's exactly what you envisioned. You're mm-hmm. like, that's, I think one of the only things, one of the ones that, that, that has an imprint on me in my life was when I was at Disney World with a friend and he had these like sparkly pink Mickey Mouse ears on and we I were near the, the castle. You, you know exactly which one. Uh, we were near the castle and I was like, ooh, that would be a nice photo. And I imagined a photo and when I went and it was like, that's ex- the exact photo that I was thinking about in my head. And it was like, to the to the actual, like the framing, it was like perfect. That feeling is something that we chase. Mm-hmm. And it is so nice, especially when it's from one person to the other. When it's an idea that you come together on and the execution actually happens. It's like classic. Like that's such a good feeling. So I understand why the... It is the best feeling in the world, I think. And I think it's also why we work. Mm. There's not a lot of... There's very high quality communication that happens between the two of us around the things that we think matter. Yeah. Like honesty and Mm. ego death and how we build a team and Mm -hmm. transparency and legal and finance. But when it comes to the creative stuff, I think we're really fortunate to be so incredibly blindly confident in each other's skills Mm. that we're like, cool, we'll just figure out the rest. But we don't inhibit each other's creative process. And I think that from day one has just been an immense amount of trust, but also an immense amount of like, no, we're, we actually just live rent free in each other's heads. (laughs) So I know what that's going to look like and sound like and feel like. Yeah. I think I've recently experienced that. So like other people that I work with are not Mm. used to having that much creative freedom Mm. and say in projects. And so like, I've come on as, you know, because yeah, my style with anybody is to, um, for it to really be a collaboration and not just like me tell you what to do. Yeah. Um, and also like, even as a director, like even if I have ideas, I want the DP to come with their own ideas. I want the editor to come with their ideas. Um, because I think all parts of that process is what creates the project and all of our decisions matter. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I think, yeah, it was, I've had the experience where I've tried to work with somebody and they were like, no, 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 just tell me what to do. Mm. Like, I, <laughs> and they're like, this is too much freedom. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well then well, this isn't going to work then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um, because I like, like I, I need to know that like, you're also going to bring yourself to this. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, um, it's a difficult line to kind of, uh, walk. Um, But I think that that's kind of like, you know, that's why we do our thing and that's why we work so hard to perfect it is because when you can walk that line, everything just works, Um, especially in the, the, you know, world of production and 
Um, even in other areas of business, when you can walk that line where there's like a give and take and it's not just like one side of the entire situation. Like we want to be individuals within this thing that uh, partake and actually add instead of just being like the, I don't even know what you call like the machines that, you know, yeah. do the thing, right? Um, it's also the difference yeah. between accountability and blame. Yeah. Mm. Oh, for sure. And Shushana in mm-hmm. practice has shown me things mm. mm-hmm. that I think otherwise I wouldn't be able to see. We worked on yeah. a project with somebody where they were an equal partner in it. And their idea of what being a partner meant was very different from ours in terms of effort. And when you're in entrepreneurship, I had to humble myself because for most of my career, I've only known entrepreneurship, whereas many people, Shushana included, have been in structures and are used to being told what to do explicitly. And when they can't, they're not used to people being exceptionally direct if it's something Mm. that's framed as what you do outside of your nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I don't understand. If you're a partner, you should want this to work. You should want to do your share of the work. And Shushana was like, why don't you just ask them Mm. if they want to do these things and what participating looks like to them. Exactly. And that reframed everything for Mm. us. And so I think we operate on the culture of a lot of accountability with each other and with ourselves Mm -hmm. as opposed to to blame or managing yeah. someone else's expectations. Yeah. And everyone knows on the inside when you're not doing something. I've had that <laughs> feeling. We've all had that feeling where you're like, yeah. mm, should I answer that email sooner? Should I finish that thing earlier? And so naturally, if somebody asks mm-hmm. you in a way that grants you grace, you'll probably react with compassion. Yeah. And that's that's incredibly important. We've <laughs> I have so many stories of uh, just with Project Feel. And uh, sometimes people decide to do like, they'll like, oh, can we do like a collaborative event? Because we know you're good at it. So like, let's collab on this event and make this happen. And collaboration f- for them when they were talking about it. So I've seen what you guys can do um, and I can't do that. So oh, like a, let's collaborate so that you can us. do this. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Let me not, let me not. Accountability wanna, died yeah, the day it's... the internet adopted the word collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually really hate that word. Yeah, really um, interesting. She won't use it. I literally will never use you it. You will wow. never. I'm like, no, we're going to work together. Mm. <laughs> um, which also implies an exchange of either payment or some other's agreement. Labor, time, ownership, right? Mm. And I think mm. collaboration is really code for free instead of partnership, mm. right? When we think along the lenses of production, influencers, content creators, entrepreneurship. And I think that's really interesting because it seldom has to do with money for us. We don't actually, our non-paid clients and projects are treated with (laughs) the same level of care Mm. as our paid client Mm -hmm. projects are. Mm -hmm. The difference is like, if you don't want to give 110% of yourself, but you're asking me to give 250, Mm -hmm. immediately we have not managed expectations. For sure. That and when people ask you for a collaboration, but they don't know what they want you to do, you're like, oh, you yeah. just saw me do something cool. Yeah. And you want but you're not even, like, cool. I may not be the right person for yeah. you to do that yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. And it's the, it's a, it's a, it's a cultural thing. It's like a, we, I don't know how, I don't know when we had, uh, like decided to not be responsible for things, but like so many of the people that I know, people that I, um, have known in the past and, uh, even my own struggles, for some reason, there's just like this really weird relationship with responsibility. Mm. Um, I think for me, the educational, our education system has a lot to do with it, just in terms of how we were all educated. Um, and it just was never a connection that I was, I was like asked to make, which is like, how does responsibility play a role in your life? And what does it mean to be a responsible person? Mm. So you find that, especially in our creative communities, I can talk all day about creatives who don't know <laughs> what responsibility is like and want everything to be kind of like an ideal world anyway mm. let's not talk about others um let's talk about you guys both okay. okay we know the connection you guys are you connect together you 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 know you manage each other's weaknesses and you and you kind of like flourish together um when you started ode what were there any like gaps or holes that you saw in your communities or in other communities that you wanted owed to kind of fill in any way i know this kind of like might take some time to think about this but i feel like there there was there you know i feel like there's something for sure we thought and thought and thought about it so much so it's Good. almost like we know the answers nice. to all of this. Mm-hmm. you can start <laughs> I think that the fundamental truth about Shushana and I is that Mm. we grew up on the internet and in real life. Mm. 
Mm. And I think that that's a unique experience where if your formative years are happening in physical spaces that might be familiar or new or around communities that might be familiar or new, when the same thing is happening digitally, you grow up with suddenly an extreme amount of consumer psychology and pop culture references. Mm. And it wasn't Mm -hmm. until last year that I truly could pinpoint that and describe it to you because I started to understand the way our brains work and the reason we've never had to explicitly explain anything to each other is because we consumed a lot of the same things. Mm. And Mm -hmm. so our references subconsciously are from the same places. And then on the side of the in real life communities we grew up in, we both in our own way, I use this word gracefully, were misfits in the community we were in, but also really loved our culture Mm. in the ways that culture may be traditionally critiqued. And so we were participating in the arts and speaking our languages and caring about older people in our communities, younger Mm. people in our communities Mm -hmm. and how to advocate for them. And so we started to realize that Everybody cares about representation, but very few people know what it means to embody inclusion. America is a very young country. Its struggles are very young. And because of the education system being so broken, people have very little knowledge about what happened in other countries before people immigrated to America yeah, of course, and yeah. centuries old culture. And mm-hmm. so we effectively realize we're both children of immigrants. People that work with us are immigrants themselves or children of immigrants. And the people whose narrative that seems to get lost the most is immigrants, especially if they don't identify with whatever the current mainstream stereotype mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. or single narrative might be of those people. So that's what we wanted to service. We were like, what if we just think about how do we take people from the same backgrounds as us and position them as equal and build equity for them in mm. anything they do? So if you're mm. a musician in the concert you're playing or if you're a new restaurant in the types of customers you get or how you're spoken about or written about in a food blog Mm. how do we make it so that people stop seeing themselves through the lens of exoticism or Mm. exceptional or needing to do something great related to their culture to be given the opportunity to just exist in that space um so that's i think um just to add to that um i took um this script writing class uh in college and there was a like a, in like one of the first things that my professor said to us and she's um a, a woman of color and um she was like there's no such thing as a default white character mm. so like when you're writing your scripts and you're describing your characters who are they actually yeah yeah <laughs> um mm. and um those character development uh, exercises totally, like, <laughs> completely, like, rewired the, like, white-centered brain that my prior education had trained mm-hmm. me so well in. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, to be like, oh, shit, oh, that's right, yeah. Like, why is it that when I think of somebody, the first, like, it's a white woman, like, why? <laughs> like, yeah. um, Mm. Uh, and so then, and then, yeah, and then, and now it's, I have, I have quotas for white people on my set. Um, so, um, so yeah, and, and with, with Ode, it was, I think everything we do now is, our default is thinking about, like, everybody in our life is a children of immigrant or, Mm -hmm. um, and it's not at all, it's just, it just, it's natural. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, it doesn't require much effort on our part to mm-hmm. be inclusive because mm-hmm. really, obviously, the ideal is that we arrive in a world where inclusivity is not a mandate that you yeah. have to meet. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not necessary anymore for the most part. Like, it's not like we don't have to be like, okay, well, we're lacking in representation in this realm, so... Let's look into that realm to bring more people out there to give them their their what they deserve in terms of representation. Should be we should ideally get to a point where everybody's well represented and spoken for. Um, and I think that's the most important thing is that we, what you guys are talking about is is like when you have that centered brain that's based on just what you've seen and what you grew up learning and what they kind of like you know showed you every day. Um, it, it's it's more about who was speaking when you were learning and. Uh, you know, through the historical figures that they were teaching us about, what did that person look like or feel like or how did they speak? Um, and when you don't have that representation of what you look like, feel like, and how you speak, 
um, it does a lot of damage that we're now starting to unravel and we're starting to see. Um, and it's what it sounds like to me is that, you know, Ode was saw that uh, sort of gap where there was like something lacking heavily, especially from your cultural viewpoint, your, your lens, essentially. Um, and that, and that's, that's, that's beautiful. And I would, I guess a difficult question to ask is like, in the in today's world there are a lot of uh now that we're having kind of like a swing back in a lot of ways just in terms of um because we had a moment where a, a lot of media and a lot of people were speaking on inclusion a lot and what it means to be inclusive there's kind of like a bit of a cultural swing that's going back in the other direction so now it's it's a little more uh, some people have feelings about when you talk about inclusion and diversity and stuff like that. And, you know, we don't have to cater to people like that, but some of them have, I guess, uh, opinions about that. And they don't see the, the, what you're actually trying to do. So I guess what I'm trying to get to is, I guess, how do you, what, what does it really mean? Because for the, those people, I just think it's a lack of perspective. What does it really mean to see your people and people that are that you want to represent what does it mean to see them succeed in the ways that Um, you want them to succeed so i want to also say that um for those other folks um i think it's also a matter of not discounting anybody's experience Mm -hmm. and so those people also right it's we all have our own points of reference yes um and so I think the whole point of inclusivity and and true representation is understanding that every community has multitudes. Um, And, and so like, even with our, within our own community with, you know, entertainment and TV Mm -hmm. shows and movies that have come out Mm -hmm. that have had um, more South Asian characters in the forefront, right? There's still criticism about like, well, that's not my experience. Mm. And it's like, well, no, mm. it's not your experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, that's why we need more mm. stories and mm-hmm. we need to create more opportunities for people to be able to tell um, their experience. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, and so I think that's what success is, is mm. being able to, have a spectrum of stories and characters. Yeah. Um, and also just like be yeah. able to create a dope sci fi film that just happens to have a South Asian person in it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't think that we, I think success in representation and inclusion looks to me like people did research and did not try to represent anything. Mm. And I know that that seems like a strange thing to say, but you will never catch Shushana and I in any piece of public facing content and how we describe our company ever having said that we're a South Asian blah, 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 or that we cater to South Asian blah, blah, blahs, because that's not only not true to our lives. Mm -hmm. South Asia is a conglomerate of seven to eight countries, depending on whose revisionist history you're reading in the West. And we represent three to five of them at any given time on our team. Yeah. And even having said that, the communities we live and work and surround ourselves with are not exclusively from Mm -hmm. those three to five backgrounds Mm -hmm. or communities. Mm -hmm. Because who consumes media? Everybody. Yes. And who's entitled to consuming media? Everybody. Mm. And so fundamentally, our job when doing inclusive work is that all work is inclusive. Mm -hmm. And it's made not as a reaction. Mm. So the thing we talk to a lot of companies about when we're consulting with them is that diversity and representation can't be a reaction yes it can't be like oh well now there's not east asian representation Mm. in this and now there's not this representation in this and now there's not it has to be like when you build something for the populations that i'm servicing Mm. have i made every concerted effort to find somebody that can fill this role and am i accounting for the fact that because of systemic oppression they may not have the same formal experience that a white person does Mm -hmm. right and that's not easy Mm mm-hmm it's really, really actually very hard sometimes. Yeah, I know firsthand that I am one of very few people that has the experience I have in specifically dealing with go-to-market for South Asia mm-hmm. and musicians in the diaspora and subcontinent. 
I feel an immense amount of imposter syndrome because I haven't done that at Spotify, mm. Mm. at Columbia Records. Mm. Very few people have done it there yeah, yeah, for, for sure. that specific market. But that said, it took me ages and years mm. and people willing to teach me and me researching, oh, this is how you describe that thing that you did. Yeah. This is how you make yourself searchable. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell anyone you did it, so guess what? No one knows. Yeah. Yeah. But those things, that's how you build inclusion. Inclusion mm. is equity building. Representation and diversity yeah. is often tokenization and equality. And those yeah. are different things. Yeah. Yeah. I and it's, it's it's similar to the meme where it's like, oh well, here's the month where all of the companies <laughs> are gonna put up the pride flags and then yeah. not do anything after or before that month to do anything for that cause right so it's it, it is a meme but it, you know it's there's there's reality to that and i appreciate you guys speaking i know that was like a kind of random no question no. but like i just wanted to you if know we're gonna be about it we have to be comfortable yeah, the, answering those yeah, things. No, that's great. So, but i will say all the mm -hmm. stuff that may feel corny sometimes for yeah. lack of a better word like the it's also progress mm. right yeah it's also progress yes i agree so you manage a few artists a few very special people um, and you uh, you do also do production services, so you have clientele or you help them with their production needs and, and then things to that nature. You know, you have, you guys do a lot. Um, where do you, uh, how is the, that balanced? Is it all kind of like in the same pool? Do you guys do things separately? Because I know you both have different expertise in terms of that. Um, but I guess, is it, how much of it is actual artist management? How much of it is like production and services? Because the reason I'm asking is because I know a lot of production companies that have attempted to do similar things where they manage and they also have like client work that they do. Um, and it oftentimes kind of falls flat. It's very difficult to manage. It's very difficult to balance. Um, what does that look like? I was at an event last week for investors and founders that mm. were women of color, and it was lovely. Mm -hmm. It was predominantly tech and B2B software sales type oh, businesses. Okay. And so I was very much an anomaly in the room. Mm -hmm. But this woman said to me, well, it sounds like your company is not sector agnostic. And that's fancy finance people for, it means that we work in a few different industries and offer a few different services mm -hmm. that seem like each of them would be their own companies. And mm -hmm. I said to her, no, but we're approach agnostic. And that's what I think helps us function. So Ode mm. is a brand strategy, talent management, and event production firm. Yeah. And so at any given time, we're consulting with clients on their marketing and business development strategy. At any given time, we're managing artists mm -hmm. or working with artists we don't manage on their campaigns and releases or producing mm. events or content, whether that's for our own platforms mm -hmm. or for clients. Mm -hmm. The reason all of that works is because our unique selling proposition or niche is that we're telling inclusive, well-informed stories that are authentic yeah. with catered sales goals yes. for those people. Mm. And for children of immigrants or immigrants themselves, we're also population agnostic. We're mm. catering to them because we're one of few people that can speak to them in the way that they understand. And mm. I don't mean language. I mean yeah. understanding limitations or needs or helping them go from, okay, I think I know I need something to mm -hmm. what is it that I need to how do I execute? Mm -hmm. Because no one else is going to take the time to educate. Yeah. And so, so that's how true. we, I think, balance things. Yeah. And, and when you say approach agnostic, um, I think that's a very interesting terminology. What, what exactly do you mean by, mean by that? Like, because I can kind of guess, but I want to hear it <laughs> from you. The way we approach dealing with yes. any of our clients, irrespective of who they are, there's always an extreme emphasis on taking storytelling. So how they talk about their brands mm -hmm. themselves, their product, their service, their music, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, and making sure it's attached to measurable business outcomes. Yes, okay. Incredible. And so, I, yeah, I think that's how we mm -hmm. handle doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, and we're both really, 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 can't say this enough, organized. And I nice. think a lot of oh. creative Oof. collectives that collaborate Yes. <laughs> Love to be like, inshallah and vibes, my friend. Let's do like, it. yo, handshake, no contracts. And I understand yep. that culture, actually. Because <laughs> creating things like art, because you all work with musicians yeah. frequently, it's a trust based intuition vibes process. Yeah. So I understand not wanting yeah. to formalize it. But one of the things I see a lot in immigrant communities as a commonality is the fear of legitimization through mm. paperwork. And mm. a lot of that comes from very real life experiences. Lack of responsibility. But also sometimes immigration. Um, and so I think that having said that, we as women don't mm -hmm. have the same luxuries that men do mm -hmm. on people following through on the handshake. 
And I've seen it happen, right? That's so fascinating. And so if being Mm. explicit or having contracts or seeing through on the other side of that handshake Mm. makes us more formal, people I think have called our approaches white before. Oh, wow. um, That's really interesting. Just very interesting. And I was like, hmm. oh, so equitable, transparent, and worthy of equal respect. We should all think about that. Unpack that shit. Pretty wild. (laughs) We need to do a few surveys in that (laughs) area of life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so I think we lean heavily on treating ourselves like a startup and all of our yeah. artists and clients like startups. That's yeah. that's incredible. I mean, they are. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Every artist is a business. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you st- start doing the, oh, well, he said that he would do this for mm. me. <laughs> um, really? Where did he say it? <laughs> Where? You got, a, you got an email? <laughs> No, it's all good. No, like, he sent me a Snapchat. <laughs> like, Stop. He said, I got you. And then all of a sudden, like, your that song that you wrote for that artist mm. is charting and billboarding, and you have no money. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. not paying yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so, mm-hmm. um, so, yeah. Um, uh, I think, yeah, and I think for, for me, because of the whole, like, immigration thing mm. and, like, having to be concerned about my family being deported because I'm the only Mm. (laughs) American born citizen in my entire family. Um, I was like, no, 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 no. For the rest of my life, shit, papers, give me the papers. Yeah. 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 And that's what a, that's a great connection too. It's like something you learn from such a wild life circumstance, like in terms of the experience that you're having. But it kind of it, it protects you in a lot of ways in the future when you're going about these deals. Um, something that uh, we had a somebody called her name was Ashaya, um, wonderful model, commercial model, and she spoke a lot uh, about um, how there's not even really an organized union for models, and how that alone, like a lot of them are just going based off a of word, like hey, I really like your look, let's go over here and take some photos and that's it and it's like oh great opportunity but then you leave that and for some reason those photos are being used but you have no idea why you have no idea how to do anything about it Mm -hmm. you you know it's it's stuff that's that sounds very um simple and sounds harmless to a lot of these artists that go into these rooms but they don't know how much value they have Mm -hmm. just in in the conversation just being there at the table to have a conversation with some people that are trying to get something out of them um and i always appreciate it when there's a two talented individuals who decide to do something about that and make sure that people are being represented fairly and also uh, making sure that they're being taken care of. Just like Project Feel, great example of word. Like we've been taking each other by our word for a long time. And there have been, you know, for the company itself, there are of course agreements within the company to, you know, make sure that it's an actual business, that it's, you know, run fairly on the inside. But everybody outside of that, that has been helping Project Feel, a lot of this has been like, like I'm gonna I'm gonna volunteer my time and help out. Um, but it's a lot of the conversations we're having having now is how can we make sure that while you're helping out, we're not only making sure that your time is being valued, but we're also making sure that in the future you get taken care of if Project Field were to succeed in any way. And a lot of people want to volunteer time and be really nice to 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 the people around them that they love that they want to see succeed creatively, but they don't know how to take care of their own their own value mm-hmm. like that's really, really huge. And I feel like you guys are solving a lot of those problems with the artists that, um, that you work with. This is what it sounds like, at least. Formalization mm. contracts, agreements, are a product of good vibes, mm. energy, mm. and intention. Yeah. And so if you have that, the agreement shouldn't make someone flinch. Yeah. And ethically, we say this a lot, like we go into things with equity in mind. Mm. And so I've never presented a contract we thought was unfair. We've mm. never done anything that we think is unethical. And so... Having said that, a lot of artists are not, no one ever taught anyone how to read a contract. Yeah. Right? I didn't, we didn't go to Ivy Leagues. Mm-hmm. We weren't exposed to certain things. We don't know what we're learning. Yeah. But we recognize that we have the Googles and the Chat GPTs and mm-hmm. the How to Build Your LLC influencer on TikTok. And <laughs> there seems to be a reasonable amount of resources yeah. to educate yourself even slightly. Mm-hmm. But all the time before we consider managing an artist, one of us has worked with them in some capacity or had mm. several iterations of a conversation and yeah. done the, I got you yeah. on vibes. And mm-hmm. if that is reciprocal and true, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. formalization feels like a natural outcome, not something you're convincing someone of. Yeah. We don't convince mm-hmm. people to do things. 
And then fundamentally, if perception is reality, then I really hope you have an email that the third person reading would leave with the same understanding as you do. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, American law is reasonable person standard and look around and tell me who reasonable people are in this country. Because it's not us. Mm. That was good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, What I was going to... Thank you. (laughs) What I was going to add just to that was that the agreement should preserve the relationship. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And, you know, you know, obviously Joshua and I are friends who work together. We hire a lot of our friends as well. And a lot of our clients are mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, people that we have personal relationships with. And, like, um, there's a <laughs> there's a little – sometimes we fall into the, like, oh, you're my friend, just do me the favor. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, that expectation, mm-hmm. um, which, you know – there's a level to which the favor sure. can run. Yeah, there's a line. Um, there's a line. Um, but then after that, like, you know, the the money exchange or the whatever exchange mm-hmm. terms, whatever it is, mm-hmm. that's what helps make sure that you stay friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that, like, you don't start to resent each other. <laughs> yes, resentment is huge. In fact, the only times we've, knock on wood, had to deal with anything of mm-hmm. that nature, I think the three times I can think of whether it was, like, needing to rework something with a client or continuing not to work with somebody or assessing a partner's investment mm-hmm. in something has all been times we worked with people we knew the least. Mm. Well, that's so fascinating. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's because we all have a lot of respect for each other. Yeah. You may not always like each other. When yeah. you manage artists, oh, there's a lot of days where I'm sure <laughs> they're all like, not this chick with answer my Slack messages. <laughs> like, go ahead, call a record label, call any manager and tell me if they have their roster on Slack. They're yeah. going to be like, what are you on? But for me, the communities I'm representing mm. have never been enabled and empowered to take themselves seriously. Yeah. Mm. So when you're on Slack, you're not on Slack for me, actually. I could communicate mm-hmm. with you on any medium. Mm-hmm. You're in it for you. So yep. you tar- start to treat your art like it's a valuable, profitable mm-hmm. investment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think, you know, we, we, we be using the project management nice. tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, well, I mean, thank you so much. We're a little bit past time, so I want to make sure. Yeah. We're, um, so just want to thank you both again for being here. I really do appreciate it. So much knowledge, so much valuable wisdom coming from you both that I think that everybody listening should uh, take to heart and uh, examine and, and do some introspection on all of this information mm-hmm. as well, just because it's so important, especially if you're an artist, like, can't stress this enough i'm finding this out for myself um introspection is key in all of this and it really really helps when you have observers um and i think that when an artist gets a manager or an artist has a production company behind them that knows what they're doing it makes it so much easier to introspect and to be able to 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 you know it's it, it, like we said earlier it's about you know getting your thoughts to to into reality and I think that the more people you can add that you trust and that you believe in and, uh, and that you can blindly trust, um, the, the easier it is for it to kind of become a reality. Um, and I think it's beautiful what you both are doing, um, especially because of the way you approach, uh, like you said, equity and, and the way you approach representation is really refreshing. And um, thank you for dealing with the, my difficult uh, questions and addressing the people that you know don't always need to be addressed in a a lot of ways but um yeah no again thank you so much i thank you yeah to end off the podcast um please share with us how can we support you Mm. if there's anything coming up any events um any projects coming out from your artists or any clientele or just personally what you guys got going on Mm -hmm. and then also uh if you don't mind giving us some words of wisdom uh for everyone you oh. dropped a lot but you know we want one more from you <laughs> i feel like we need like a newsletter of updates True. Um, i don't remember when the company got this this hype that's awesome that's good to hear uh, let's see please go stream this song warm in the winter that project feel shot the visualizer nice, for, for one of our artists yes. mickey montebello yeah. hell yeah um jean is i love jean <laughs> jean uh at jean the machine underscore um is um when is this podcast coming out oh uh the next thursday right mm-hmm. next thursday not th- yeah, spoken word thursday. artist author speaker poet um jean 
Uh, okay, well, I guess. All right, I'm gonna say it, and if I if you can't include it, you can cut it. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, Gene, who is a spoken word artist yes. and a poet, is having his first live show nice. at uh, June first at a theater oh, sick. in Manhattan. Oh, sick. Um, so I'll be there. You will be there. I'll be there. I can't wait. Actually, might be, be shooting. Okay. Oh. Well, <laughs> Have a well, hey, contracts. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, and you can follow the company at underscore o two underscore. And <laughs> let's see, um, Avanti is coming stateside in North America for this summer and working on a bunch of really cool releases. Abe, another one of our musicians, is about to drop a very interesting multilingual project. Mm. And our Favorite Canadian, <laughs> Baksh, is working on some really, really, really cool composition work that we're really, really excited about. And we can find all of this uh, on your Instagram yep. page, right? You can, you can. There's a laundry list of updates. We're very, yeah. we're very grateful to have things to update you about. That's that's honestly incredible. Thank you. I'm I'm glad I. I, wa- I wanted to have more time to shout out all the individual artists, but like I'm glad you guys were able to both, you know, shout them out on what they're doing. Yeah. So yeah. that means a lot. And a lot of love to our newest signee, Smiley yes. Singh. He's actually an incredible percussionist and orchestral instrumentalist who I think plays 21 instruments, That's which is kind of crazy. Nice. Um, but the the one thing to stay updated on is our roster, our clients, our projects are a reflection of us as people. Mm. All of us, all mm-hmm. 10 or 13 mm-hmm. in total. But we we're all multifaceted so you'll find something you like hopefully and you don't have to like everything beautiful thank you and any words of wisdom from you both (laughs) dig around in that wonderful brain of yours don't (laughs) underestimate what your lived experience has taught you Mm. and figure out how to translate that into things that are measurable and easy to communicate, but lived experience is experience, and chances are, if you look like any of us, mm-hmm. data does not include you in the way that it should. And so whoever is referencing data to describe you is telling your story wrong. So learn how to talk about yourself so you can tell your own stories. Yes. I'll go with my standard of, I don't believe anything is p- impossible. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you, almost, you almost said possible. I know. <laughs> I was like, uh, wrong it word. It's a good turn. It's a good turn. Well, no. I think everything's possible. Beautiful. Nothing's uh, impossible. She really does. I do. I do. Yes. I really do. My whole um, outlook on life is that if you have something that you want to do, um, all it takes is being able to create these small steps to get there yes um so if it's any consolation every time i have an idea she's like cool so where's the treatment where's the plan of action (laughs) she's already sold there was no sale i needed to make there she's like an idea is just an idea Mm. until it's not true true can i say something off the record uh yeah yeah do you want me to cut like cut and oh no i want it on camera and i want you to send it to the person i'm about to shout out right now oh Oh, god cast you heard what this man said let us manage you thank you okay how did you know (laughs) okay well okay well listen guys thank you so much for watching everybody (laughs) that was involved in, in watching this and um i appreciate you all and i appreciate you both again for being here um and yeah, I just, I'm very grateful. So thank you. I'm sure everyone else watching is also grateful for your wisdom and your knowledge and your expertise. So uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of this course. Was super fun. Nice. Yeah.